All right, now Malin's gonna demonstrate how to put the harness on with a collar. Now, if you'll notice how that lays across that horse's neck and it'll pull against its shoulder even. You wanna be able to put your hand in there. What do you say, Malin, three fingers between the neck and the collar? Yeah. Okay. And, you know, this is kinda of like saddle fitting. You know, you want that to fit right. I remember years ago, the old timers used to soak their collar in the water trough to get it wet. And then they would put it on the horse and work it so the collar could kind of mold toward the, toward the horse's neck. And that's, that's not a bad idea. Go ahead. Now notice how he holds his harness and he's got his arm through there. And he's got everything organized. And you know, we're gonna talk about that a lot here today is just to do this in an organized, orderly fashion where it's not tangled up. You know, these guys get up early in the morning and they're harnessing multiple horses a lot of times to go to the fields and work. Well, you can't be spending an hour untangling everything. You know, you have to put it on the rack, take it off the rack in an organized fashion to where um, you can do it day after day after day efficiently. All right, so these right here, these metal bars are called the hames, and that's what he's adjusting right now. And if you look, they're gonna fit right here on that collar, just like that. Now, when you get a work harness, it'll have adjustments here, where you can set the different angles according to the horse's shoulder angle and size and so on. But this is just a driving harness here. So we would call this the collar, these are the hames, this is the saddle, okay? And back here, this is the britchens. It goes around back. Right here, this is the crouper. That goes under the tape. He's gonna put his belly strap on, and he's gonna tighten that up just snug, just like he's tying his shoelaces, not too tight, okay? And then, Notice how he's got his reins tied where they're not hanging on the ground and getting tangled up, okay? Now he's gonna hook that strap. This ring right here is what the shafts of the cart go through, okay? okay. Now, word of caution. Be careful right here. You get your horse prepared for this. These horses have been conditioned for all this and you notice they're standing the hitch. Well, it always doesn't work that way. They don't start out like that. And before you put that crouper underneath that tail, you make sure you watch one of my other videos on how to build confidence in your horse because that could turn into a serious situation right there if you put that crouper under an unconditioned horse that's not prepared correctly for it. All right, so now he's gonna adjust the strap down the middle of the back He's going to adjust that to where that crouper and the, and the britchens are going to hang to where it's not going to be too tight and it's not going to rub the horse. Okay. See how he's going to organize the horse's hair around its tail because you don't want that all wadded up, causing a problem. Like that. I'm gonna tell you folks, if you don't do that right, if your horse isn't ready, be prepared, you might get your <laughs> you might get you might get your teeth kicked out, okay, or the front of your buggy kicked out. Um, now see here, he's got his britchens adjusted to where it's just underneath right here. They, sometimes you'll see people where the britchens are up here. Sometimes you'll see them clear down here. In my opinion, that's proper. Because when that pulls back to keep that buggy from going forward. It pulls evenly to where if it's too low, it's gonna pull the legs up under the horse. If it's too high, it's gonna ride up here and it's just not gonna give you any resistance when you're going down a hill particularly, okay? All right, so now these are what we would call the traces. Hold that down. They come from the collar down and that's just, this is what'll hook up to your buggy. 
you notice you got three adjustments there for different lengths and we're going to go over that in a minute. And then this ring hooks right here to your shafts. So this purpose of this is to hold the buggy back from running into the back of the horse when you're stopping or going down a hill. And of course this is for when you pull. Okay. But if you look at here now, this is how you start out. Look how Malin's going to store his tub. And now when he walks his horse, you don't want that dragging on the ground when you're moving your horse around, say going to the cart or whatever. If you store your tub like that, then when you go back up into the shafts, you'll have your tub right there ready to go. You see people driving, we're leading the horse around dragging these things. You don't want to do that. It's improper. Okay, so now we're going to put a bridle on. Okay. While he's doing that, come in here. Let me show you. This is our uh, harness room. This is how we hang and store our harness. So see how we hang our collars up here. And we've got written in the sides. Okay. And then this is a pad that goes inside the collar that sometimes if a horse, if the, pad, if the collar doesn't fit right or the horse's neck is in the right shape, we'll put a pad in there. Okay. We hang all our bridles. Like right here, this is a mule bridle. With these back wing blinders. Here's a bridle without blinders. Here's a bridle with blinders. Okay. We'll have a talk about blinders here on another occasion. Okay. Um, but it's just good to see how the hooks we use to hang our harnesses and we keep them very organized and we want them to wear, um, you know, we've got the team harnesses together, we've got the different styles, we've got double harnesses, and single harnesses, and pony harnesses, we've got every size of pony harness you can think of. And, um, okay, so now let's come out and ride on our horse. Now to bridle this horse is the same way that you bridle a riding horse. And watch how Malin's going to organize things. And he's going to make this a pleasant experience. He's not going to jerk and bang on its teeth. And he's going to request that that horse holds its head down, just like that. Now if a horse has got a long forelock, if you braid it like that, that'll keep that hair from getting all fussed up in amongst all this here. Now we're going to drive our horses with a little spring halter underneath because most of our horses we're schooling and we want to be able to tie them and we want to be able to get off and get the rope and, and handle the horse. So we don't want to have to get off the cart and grab the reins to control or to manage the horse on the ground. Now the thing that I want you to look at that I think is very important is right here, this check rein, okay? See how this check rein goes up the side of the horse's face and comes back like this and it's loose, all right? Now there's a big debate about that where out here in Amish country, these guys wanna come from the saddle between the ears and over check that horse. So this would come over top of the ears where it holds the horse's nose out and he can't flex his jaw like this. So see here, I can flex his horse's jaw with this side check. If I come over top between his ears, his neck is stiff right here. So if his neck is stiff and he can flex his jaw, he can't engage his shoulder and he can't pull as well, okay? So that whole over check thing, I think it's like a standard bred race horse carry over deal or something. I don't understand it. I can't get anybody to explain to me why they do it. I mean, it's just, you know, some of those horses they drive are off the track race horses and I think you can get a better handle on them. Uh, you know, some of those horses and I don't know anything about that and I don't want to know. Uh, but when you get the harness, I recommend a side check, just like this. And I want that horse to be able to engage himself 
can put himself in posture where he can pull more efficiently. If his head's up in the air, if he cannot engage these muscles, and he not, cannot engage himself mechanically to function efficiently. Okay. So now, Balin, that is basically uh, a driving harness uh, with a collar. I can hook his reins up like this. I need to pull, your, pull those out and show them how you, when you go to hitch. Okay. So now, put them back like you just got hitched and show them how. So when you're done driving, come just like that and tie a little butterfly knot. All right. So now what we'll do is we're going to demonstrate how to take the harness off, which is just as important as putting it on because when we take the harness off, we're going to prepare ourselves for putting it on the next time. So if we take it off properly and hang it up properly, the next time we go to harness, everything's going to be organized in and order.